Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of our live show tonight with me and my guest today I'm really pleased and honored that he's here is Nikolai Pollock. Welcome Nikolai. Hey, hi everybody, how are you? Hi, oh, great. Great that you're here in the show and uh, we we were hardly speaking German in this show because in the in the uh, hour before we talked German and I said we must yeah. stop now so we do speak English <laughs> and I have yeah. re to really concentrate on that now. Nikolai, yes, exactly, we have to switch. Yeah, it's great that you're here. We're actually located okay. not so far away, I think about 25 kilometers, but really? due, yeah, uh, due to Corona, actually um, we, we are in different uh, studios. So I hope that soon we'll do the switch between us better than in the last show. But I think it's working good. And okay, so so where are you then? Uh, in Pfarzheim. In Pfarzheim. So I'm in Karlsruhe. Yeah, so. yeah I know. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know you know, but I like for the audience out there. Probably like half the audience, <laughs> audience is like Pfarzheim, Karlsruhe. Yeah. Where's that? Yeah. For, for but, those. But yeah, either way, so that means we can do this maybe like in a year. We can do this in person. Yeah, sure. I will come to you. Great. <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 wait. <laughs> <laughs> For those who don't know Pforzheim, actually, when, when you're going from Karlsruhe to Stuttgart and you come in the traffic jam, this is where Pforzheim is. So it's, it's really easy to explain. <laughs> yeah. So that's why I don't know exactly where it is, because I never go to Stuttgart. <laughs> never, ever. Like, never, no, 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 it's, no, it's not a political thing. It just never happens. I have barely ever a reason. I think I was there like twice. Uh, yeah. So that's why I don't I didn't notice that. <laughs> Actually, if you live in Karlsruhe, you don't have a reason to go to Stuttgart. What, what do you want there? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, but I have to admit, like, I'm not even. I'm not originally from here. I consider ah. myself to be from Dortmund. I'm just living in Karlsruhe, so are that's you... how I used to, uh, usually put it. Oh, you, you you studied here and and forget to go back actually not even i didn't even study here um i studied in dortmund uh, technical university of dortmund yeah. uh and uh when i was done there so I, i always liked the city i always liked living there but i also felt like it's time to see more so i started to apply for jobs all over germany i was actually close to starting to apply all over europe I see. um and then like before i could get there i found a great job here in Karlsruhe, uh -huh. and me and my back then uh my girlfriend and my wife uh, we were both like what's in Karlsruhe? I don't know, but let's let's go let's go and have a look. It was yeah. kind of nice, so we moved here. <laughs> the, the center of the of the computer uh, industry is four times. So, uh, uh, sorry, it's, it's Karlsruhe, so you must be there. So it, yeah. it was absolutely correct to go there. the The first email received in Germany was in Karlsruhe, so it's oh, yeah. the right place for this job, actually. Um, yeah. By, by the way, ch cheers. You have, you have cheers. wine, I heard. So I, I yeah, no, yeah, I changed my mind last minute. I want to have something oh. fancier. So I have this. It's liquor 43, oh, okay. liquor 43, which uh, is like tastes well with everything that it tastes well with milk and everything that goes well with milk. So you can have it in your coffee. You can have it in your hot chocolate. Uh, and, and you will survive the show with that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> I try to, yeah. <laughs> okay, you you dare to do it drunk? <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> well, like, look, we just have like half an hour. I heard, so that's barely enough to really get drunk. So I just hope that by the time I'm I'm ready to pass out, that the show is over. That was my game plan for tonight. <laughs> okay, so we have a natural end then. Um, <laughs> yes, I, I think we should start with something with something um, more interesting than getting drunk. Um, so let's talk about Java. Um, we are both known uh, to Java since many, many years. And for me, Java actually is, is the best thing I discovered when it comes to programming. I did a lot of, of uh, programming languages before. And since I learned Java, I, I was always doing Java. And uh, it would be interesting to, to hear um, if you think different about Java or, or do you, if you think the same about Java, is Java the best programming language for you too? <laughs> or do you hate it? Uh, <laughs> no, I don't. I definitely don't hate it. So that one is very easy. I don't hate Java at all. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm hesitant to say it's the best programming language even just for me because the truth of the matter is I didn't try many. <laughs> so I learned oh, to Pascal okay. in, uh, in high school 
Um, and then we did uh, Java in the end, towards the end of high school and then also at university. And um, that was the thing that I learned there. We did a little bit of Haskell, but I skipped most of the course, which I really could kick my own ass now because that was <laughs> right now. I would, I would, like someone would tell me like, okay, look, we have a curriculum here. We take, you can take two, three hours out of your day. Uh, sorry, two, three hours out of your week. Uh, do the course, learn something about Haskell, right? It's, it's, it's time that, it's, it, that we just give you. That would be amazing. I would kill for the opportunity to just learn a totally different language without inter interfering with all the other stuff that I want to do. Uh, but I can't. <laughs> Back then mm -hmm. I could have, but I, didn't, I wasn't interested because I always thought of myself as somebody who's like, I was more interested in the theoretical parts of computer science. So I didn't consider myself a programmer. Mm -hmm. um, and so I didn't spend a lot of time learning languages. I just learned Java was really the only one that I learned in, in, in high school. So in university that I used occasionally. And by the, when it came time to look for a job, I realized, what, because originally I wanted to stay at the university. I think that was my, my plan, kind of plan for a while. And towards the end of studying, I realized that I can't. Like my, my, I, I can't work that way. I can't work for months at a time on something without feedback. Uh, just staying self-motivated all of that time, I just can't. I need quicker feedback cycles. And programming actually is kind of good in that, right? So something doesn't work. You sit down, you spend like an hour, and then it works. And you're like, yes, yes, that was so amazing. I'm so amazing. I made this work. Look what I made. Well, nobody else cares, but still, you made something. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, that's I thought, okay, well, then I have to program. Apparently, Java was the only thing I knew. So that was that was what I uh, what I applied for jobs for. And um, it was at, on the job that I really started to really like get into Java the ecosystem and read a lot of blogs and getting interested in like watching talks and then starting my own blog. And that's how all of that snowballed later. But honestly, it could have been any other language, I think. Yeah. I, I think I, like, I really like being in the Java community and really like enjoy working with Java. But I think if it would have been, I don't know, like JavaScript or TypeScript or some other language, the chances are decent that I would have liked it just as much. By the way, making things work, you, you would laugh. Um, I, I got noticed by Zoom that my account will end in six minutes. Yes. <laughs> That's hilarious. I was going to point that out. I see that as well. It says here remaining meeting time six and a half minutes. What's up with that, Markus? <laughs> so uh, what could we do? Uh, let's think, let's think. Um, <laughs> so this is real. The information is real, yes? This is real. Yes, this is real. So uh, we, we could do a short break so I could convince Zoom that I have a pro account. Or if you have a pro account, we could switch the accounts and I could uh, still record. So you also I don't, don't, unfortunately. You don't have. Uh, well, so I, I think we have to stop for a minute. <laughs> Live show, that's, But that's... what's the limitation here? What's the limitation? Is it like the length of a meeting? Or uh, actually, it's the length of the, the meeting, and I did several. I did several shows with that account, and it worked. Um, I don't know why. Why I have to upgrade now in the middle of the Zoom meeting? <laughs> so, that's hilarious. Okay, let's let's do that. That's no big problem. So sorry, guys. There is a short break, and right well, what after. You could do, wait, what, Marcus? What you could do? You give me a YouTube streaming key, and I could start streaming from my end. But yeah, then you would but... have like that would be. Actually... Then, then it's a one-man show. <laughs> well, you can come in then. I can give you a Jitsi log account, a Jitsi do, URL. Do, do you have but a you do you. Do you have a Jitsi account? Or I, I could start a Jitsi account. Yeah, just go to Jitsi. Jitsi is really simple. You just go to... Do you, do you know Jitsi? Yes. Um, we, we can try it. Well, live debugging the show on the show. I like it. Okay, let, let's do live debug Jitsi. So we go to Jitsi. Okay. So you have to go to meet.jit.si. Yep. I am. And then you just just create a meeting there. Okay, and we create a meeting there. I, I installed a Chrome um, plugin no, for that. No, you don't need the Chrome thing. Wait. I'm, no? Actually, the, okay. you need to create a... That's just for appointments, I think. The good thing about Jitsi is um, all you need uh, is to type something. So uh, let's say hat crash informatics. Okay. And then I always append a couple of random characters. I just send it to you on, on Zoom chat. Okay. If you click that. Yeah, just just a second, because um I have to stop my camera for a while to let true. to let to let Shitsi um get onto it. 
So, guys, you're gone for just a few seconds. We'll be back right soon. <laughs> So here we are. Hey. <laughs> Hi there. Um, yeah, it's going to be wieder live. Just a second. So in Jitsi, I think it's the wrong mic. You have a very roomy sound. I, I, I oh. guess Jitsi, I'm not sure whether, what that does with the streaming, but I think on Jitsi it's the wrong mic. Okay, let's try this. The mic, the mic, the mic, where is it? So it should be better now. Yeah, much better. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. But I, I have the next problem because, yeah, yeah, there you are. Great. Great. There you are. So it should be working in a few seconds. Yeah. Well, yes. like Jitsi does not do the selection of who's speaking, I think. Yeah. Yeah. But that's no problem. We see you at the moment in the live stream welcome back by the way to the audience <laughs> sorry for the technical problems <laughs> we solved them meanwhile my tip nikolai great thanks to, the, to to tell me that use jitsi instead of zoom so that is what we learned today <laughs> <laughs> and we were talking about java you you right. told us right how you came to java and why java is so great and uh, so where do you want to go from here yeah. So one of I can tell you one of the things that I really like about that I like about right now being in Java. Once again, I don't want to compare this to other languages. I don't know what's what's happening there. But what I enjoy was that at a time when I was like just learning Java, it was very it was standing very still. There was like during the time when I was like Java six and seven out. That was like late phase university, yes. and that was when I started to work. And at the moment when I re when I got that covered, when I felt like okay, I understand Java at least a little bit now. Um, and I got curious about what else and what next that was when Java 8 came out mm -hmm. and then Java 9. So mm -hmm. really, I was basically happy that it coincided with me starting to move. And one of the reasons why I enjoy yeah. being in the Java uh, community right now, being like attached to that technical ecosystem is things are happening, right? Yeah. Like in recent years, uh, things, things improved and things, uh, the speed picked up a bit. And so that's really something that I enjoy a lot, yeah. all the new yeah. stuff that is that's coming out. Yeah, yeah, I I can remember I can remember when I started with Java. It it was like you said, it was slow and and clumsy, and it it, it was not like C plus plus or something. You you compile and run and it's fast. It was slow and and I I, I actually didn't like it in in the start. <laughs> but as as you said, Java eight was a game changer, and um and an eye opener for many people. And yeah. some people miss I I think the past nine editions because the, the, the nine edition was due, due to JPMS despite your great book and, and, and everything you did for JPMS it, it was a border you, you, you didn't dare to, to go past that border because you think my code will break it, it will not run there are dragons behind the wall or something yeah. and, and you, you tried a lot to convince people to go with Java 9 and uh, I, I still think that they, not many people are convinced because if you look at the numbers, what they're using, still many, many people stick with Java 8. So what do you think, what can we do to convince people to go with past 8, with 9 to yeah. 16? Yeah, so first of all, I think I'm partially at fault here as well, right? Because my first contact with the module system was that things are going to break. And Oh yeah, by the way, um, it's not it's not JPMS anymore. Uh, not? Well, it was never really was it was the what? name of the JSR. Um, but yeah, it's just the Java module system. Uh, so I, I just learned to say JPMS. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that's good because then it will be very easy for you to unlearn. <laughs> but, Great so, <laughs> about the module system. Um, so my first contact with that was also that things are going to break. I write that in the foreword of the book um, that 
uh, I was I was sitting at home reading the JavaFX mailing list in the morning before mm. heading out to work, and uh, somebody wrote a ma mail that, well, since in for in the big early days of JavaFX to write a proper JavaFX control as a as a user, you had to use internal APIs. There was no way around it. Like like to write a proper good, well well designed control, you had to do that. Period, um, and that was just common knowledge in within the JavaFX people. So um, then when the guy wrote like, look, at Java 9 is going to break that. I was like, ah, Java 9, never, Java never breaks stuff. I'm sure he's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and so later that day, I checked on that email, I followed up on that, what we're linking to all this, this module system stuff. And um, so, yeah, that's when I realized, yo, actually, he's, he's right, though. So things can break. And that was also my first contact with the module system. I wrote a blog post about that. That was one of the earlier blog posts that really got shared widely. Um, and I'm not sure how much of the overall Java 9 is going to break all things is my fault, but a certain degree it is. And also, it's not entirely wrong either, right? It's not like uh, there mm -hmm. were no problems. Mm -hmm. But I think now there aren't many anymore, if at all. So I think a lot changed since then. So when the first time I observed this was very early before Java 9 was even in early access, right? So mm -hmm. you could just look at a couple of changes and say, I think this is going to cause problems and this is going to cause problems. And some of them did, but many of the things that uh, that, that got that, I don't want to say that got broken, but many of the things that had these challenges, like libraries and frameworks, specifically the the larger ones, they worked on that very very fast and fixed those. At the time, I was still working um, at at a local company here in Karlsruhe, and they um, have a project that had like about 1.5 million lines of code that was around since like the since the beginning of the of the of the decade uh, sorry of the beginning of the century i have to say of the millennium <laughs> even so, right the, yeah. the code base started the java code base started i think either late 90s or early north so it is, it's an old large code base right you would think that no few projects have have a larger challenge it has a lot of dependencies yeah. it's not a big team you would think this project has a has a huge challenge to come to java 9 but we sat down we did the work and we were on Java 9 compatible before Java 9 even came out. And I always think like if that team, uh, which is not huge, just like, like Google, right? We have like the, just tons of money and time lying around. You just have to chip at it. And then you could make the upgrade back then. We also were on Java 11 uh, during its la la last months before it uh, was released. And I think all of that's possible. And now it's even easier. Nowadays, all your dependencies are most likely in a heavy version out there that work on these recent Java versions. So. What I always say is the best way to pre prepare an update to your new Java version is update all your dependencies and tools. And I know that that's not always easy for projects, but I don't think you can put that on Java 9 then, right? Um, mm -hmm. Like if your project is like bound to Spring 3 because you use some internals that you cannot change or, you know, you're still running in a, a five-year-old version of Eclipse uh, because you wrote some plugins that you depend on, then that's not really on the Java version, the reason that, uh, mm -hmm. that you have problems updating such a project. Um, I think nowadays it's just the update is for most projects will be really simple. Um, up, I think if you can update your dependencies and tools, it might be as easy as just bumping the version number in your in your pom file or Gradle file. Yeah. Um, but what are the reasons then, right? I mean, now I told you like it's it's a little it's just a little bit of work, but just a little bit of work is still more work than nothing. So sure, sure. Uh, why should you do it? And I think there are tons of great things. Actually, the module system itself, I still think is one of the best things that happened to Java recently. Um, although it does get some mighty competition that uh, in that regard, but still, I think the module system is great. But even if you don't care about the module system, there were so many smaller changes in Java 9, but also new APIs and improved APIs, yeah. and that happened yeah. since then. Of course, to a smaller degree because Java 9 was the last big release, but still, from Java 8 to Java um, 16 now, the difference is huge. You get records, yeah, right. you get pattern matching, you get text yeah. blocks, you get var. Uh, I'm, you get APIs like the new HTTP2 client. Um, you can now you can now write a stream API. At the end of a stream API, you can write dot to list. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you don't have to write I, connect to I list anymore. I missed that since years. <laughs> right, so there are so many things that yeah. um, uh, that are better now. And also, by the way, that's just the surface. That's just what's obvious to the programmer. Yeah. But below that, um, there were many many performance improvements as well. Uh, memory uh, consumption, for example, improved a lot. Um, that was in Java 9 with, with strings. And then there's G1 uh, got better and better. Um, there is uh, ZGC, there's Shenandoah. There are so many um, like, like good garbage crates that you can pick for for your specific um, app that you have. And that can also just save you money. Like, 
like if it, it comes down to you save resources in the cloud means you save mm -hmm. money literally mm -hmm. each month if your bill is 20 percent lower you will notice that yeah. um so i think there are a ton of good reasons uh, to update to the recent versions and i think there are like, everybody should at least try i think it's yeah. it's almost criminal criminal negligence to not at least try like if you try to actually encounter we have a dependency that is crit critical for us and that does not work on java let's say 11 or, or 16 then okay then I, I take that and then you know there's more work to be done then but if you don't try that then i think most people who didn't will be surprised by how easy it will be if they do yeah yeah i i think uh to, to amend this um there, there is one last dependency that is not upgraded and they're working busily on that which is uh, Jakarta EE itself. So mm -hmm. um, with, with Jakarta EE 10, which is uh, confirmed that it will run on um, modern Java, I think that will be the last frontier that, that holds back people from moving to modern Java. And I think we will see a large stream of applications migrate then uh, yeah. past this point. So the, the, this is the yeah. end of the of the old universe, and then we'll start uh, a yeah. new age, I think. And um, Ana yeah, another reason I think why people uh, stick to Java eight also, admittedly, it's like it's a great release, right? Like I think mm -hmm. if the last release would have been uh, like the last release before the breaking changes, uh, also the breaking has like an asterisk there. There's many things that broke because internals changed, and our stuff depended on internals when it shouldn't have. Very few changes were actually backwards incompatible in the sense of the word. But that aside, um, if Java 7 would have been the last um, version before what you said, this hurdle, yeah. um, then I think many more people would have updated. But Java yeah. 9 like, has, it has a good feature set. It's really fast. Yeah. It is uh, still well maintained. So like it's, Java 8 is a good release to be on. Right? Yeah. It's like, I think the new ones are definitely better. Yeah, you, you're just too like, comfortable with it. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Exactly. So I, I didn't want to interrupt you. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, no, you didn't. You didn't. Yeah. And and one thing that comes into my mind is, um, you you said that uh, JPMS itself. Oh, sorry, I, I I must not say JPMS, the Java module system, as I learned this evening. Yeah. Um, it, it's not that bad, and and it's a good thing to use. Um, so there, there's one guy with a completely different opinion, which is uh, Mark Struberg who yes. this evening <laughs> tweeted yes. that JPMS is the worst thing on earth ever. So at least uh, we, we have different opinions in the Java universe, yeah. which, which is a good thing. And what I like about Java is that it's actual, actually a community thing. So we can have these opinions and there is something for everybody in Java. So if you don't yeah. like the module system, okay, then, then don't use it. And um, you can go with third-party libraries if you don't want to use the original streaming libraries or whatever. And um, what I like most in Java, by the way, is that every version of Java is always faster than the previous one. So my, my 20 years old code is running faster and faster every year or every two years just by replacing a JRE and I don't have to fix anything to make it work. So yeah. th this is something I never had seen in any other programming universe before that I can really use 25 year old code and it runs and it runs great. And yeah. um, um, what, what I like to know is if you look in the future of Java, there is a lot of things to come with Project Valhalla, Project Loom, and all these projects. And um, if, if you th Im imagine a Java version that has implemented all that, you, you have the, the new threads from Loom, and you have the native calls um, from Panama, and you have Valhalla with the value types. If, if all those projects are done and finally pushed through the door, imagine that version of Java, w wouldn't that be the holy grail? <laughs> well, I think, um, so you said a couple of interesting things. I want to answer your question first, but I want to come back to a few others as well. Sure. Um, so look, you, 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 you know, you write software. You know yep. that software is never ready, right? It's never done. Yeah. So by the time we have all that, we want to have new things. And the reason for that is hmm. um, that 
you know, programming, like do, having like any kind of programming, actually, I think is always a moving target. Requirements yeah. constantly change. The, of course, the speed of change depends very much on what uh, what part uh, of the industry, what domain you're working in. Surely, uh, there are parts that fa change uh, faster than others. But one of some of the reasons why we see these uh, these big projects like Loom and Valhalla now um, mm. is because the realities of the underlying hardware changed. Yeah. Uh, so, for example, the discrepancy between um, um, like what the speed of, of the CPU and the speed of memory since Java's inception to now changed radically. So that makes something like Valhalla so important. Yeah. Um, stuff like like Loom. I feel I'm not entirely sure though because Loom is like a complex piece that I'm not that I did not yeah. get too familiar with. Um, I think Loom just I think for 20 years ago we just couldn't have Loom in that way uh, because we're not yet we didn't understand the project uh, the problem space well enough yet. That's my feeling, but I'm not mm -hmm. sure. Maybe I may be wrong there. So I think there's a lot of progress in the sense of what what the requirements are, what what kind of stuff do we want to program, right? Mm -hmm. So for the for a time, Java was big on like small devices. Yeah. Nowadays, that doesn't play such a big role anymore. But then on the other end, where where earlier servers were like these big beefy machines where you can basically like throw everything at them, now we're actually in this in a, in, a, in a situation where it makes sense to optimize on servers, like even just the size of the application that you deliver, like just the megabytes, I mean, can make a difference if you know, if you upload them through the cloud and even have fast releases, it might make yeah. a difference if you, uh, every time on every release that you do, upload a couple hundred megabytes or maybe like a couple dozen megabytes. So, um, or memory, as you mentioned, like if, you con if your app conserves memory, um, then that can just save you money, even though you don't care about the performance per se, uh, it's, it might save you money. And if you're like yeah. doing something in the cloud and you have like, thousands of instances running that, you know, you, that, that's actually money in the bank that you can have there. So I think because um, the technological background, like the requirements, the hardware, the stuff we want to work on, our, our understanding of the different problem spaces always evolves. There will always be some something that we want to have. And I think the larger challenge in the future will be, I think, maybe to get rid of stuff that we don't need anymore. <laughs> Because mm. I think at some point we have what, to start doing that. What could that be? Let, let's do a voting. I, I'm for getting rid of Cobra. <laughs> and well, Cobra, Cobra, Cobra is out though, right? Cobra isn't, isn't part of the JDK anymore. It's not part of the JDK anymore, and we kicked no. it out of Jakarta E also. So um, yeah, so that's we, we, we're we're nearly getting rid of it actually. Um, th there's one thing about Java which which also um, makes it a, a living project. Um, not only that we want to have more things in future, um, I can remember, l let's say, 10 years back, there were people discussing Java in, in the notion of it's, it's nearly dead. So th they're yeah. not fixing it anymore. Oracle, Oracle has no interest anymore. And if I look on Java today, you, you see a complete different discussion. There, there is Java in embedded computing. There is Java in cloud computing, in edge computing. Um, there, there's Java even in my Blu-ray player. So there, there's Java actually everywhere. And the nice thing is, as you said, that the software is the same. So you don't have a special Java for making it run on the cloud. You don't have a special Java for making it run in, in the edge computing. You can you can write the same Java code with the, the same APIs and they're always backwards compatible. Even, even if you drop Cobra. I never like Cobra anyway. And... <laughs> And what what I really like is that there there's this drive that there are always companies jumping on the train and providing new stuff like Intel providing the vector API for example, yeah. and and it's never that they, since 25 years everybody says oh well in future it will be dead, and it's not it, it's just not it's always developing and developing and and that is one of the greatest thing I I, I think about Java actually. Yeah, and I think um, I mean the reasons the reasons why people say that or why people believe that I think are manifold. Um, I don't want to do like uh, armchair psychoanalysis analysis from here, mm -hmm. um, but I could understand someone who maybe during the time of Java five or six when things mm -hmm. were still very cumbersome, right? There was a lot of like yeah. the, the big framework programming, um, and then also Java didn't change very much. And if you at that point you decide, you know what? Uh, I don't. I don't want to bet the rest of my career on this specific horse. 
uh, let's switch to another maybe JVM language or just entirely new uh, new technical eco technological mm. ecosystem. Mm. Um, and if that was their last impression of Java and they're not following very closely anymore, I can understand why they would be surprised that Java is still not dead and why their yeah. assumption could potentially be, well, the only reason why it's not dead is because only... I don't know, like stupid 50-year-old uh, enterprise programmers who are too lazy <laughs> to change the switch the language. It's yep. all, only because it's only them there. That's the point. And uh, <laughs> that's why that's why it's still alive, right? So I can see how you how how that opinion can form. Once again, I'm not sure how representative that is of people actually saying those things, but it's definitely wrong, right? So in the Toby index of languages, whatever that's worth, Java yeah. is always uh, at the top. I mean, not necessarily literally number uh, number yeah. one, but yeah. like in the top yeah. in top one or two or three uh when you look at like volume on on uh, on stack overflow questions yeah. when you look at uh, job offers when you look at the amount of um of recent developments that happen in the java ecosystem at the moment driven by oracle right the the yeah. java platform group by oracle um so oh by the way just i have to come back to that in a second because there might be some something i still have, didn't tell you by the way accidentally <laughs> um, okay so um, yeah, so there's like there's a lot of things happening right now in Java, but I think from the outside they could be pretty opaque, right? If you're not actually part of the Java ecosystem, you you, they, you might not just you might just not notice them. And maybe you do think that Java is actually dead and not moving, but people have been saying that for years now, as you said, like, and they will keep saying that, and they will keep mm. waiting for that. And even like even if it were true that Java's popularity relative to other languages was slowly diminishing. That still doesn't mean it's dead. It still has like millions and millions of developers and trillions of lines of code out there that will forever need to be maintained and updated and still yeah. in use. And if you turn off Java now, probably the half of the world, would, you know, would, would fall apart. It would um, stop. The, the yeah, I mean, that's stop. true of many languages, right? Yeah. It's not just Java. Like, probably the same probably is true for JavaScript and for this yeah. .NET um, ecosystem. So probably that's true for a lot of languages. I'm just saying, yeah. um, even then, there would still be a lot of Java out there, even if the language would, if, if Oracle said tomorrow, like, okay, let's stop doing this. It's not yeah, worth the effort. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, there yeah. would still be a lot of Java for the next 10 or 20 years. Sure, sure. And but, the thing I want to tell you, yeah. by the way, because something changed in the time from we, um, when we scheduled this to now that I'm here, did you know that I'm actually working for Oracle now? I have to stop the transmission now. <laughs> <laughs> I was afraid of that. <laughs> I'm now actually developer advocate for Oracle. That, that I was really? I started working really? there last week of February. Okay. Um, so okay. now being being enthusiastic about Java is not anymore just my hobby. Now it's actually also my my so, my career. So a actually, you you never were enthusiastic about uh, Java from yourself. It was just because you get paid for to tell everybody how great Java is. That was my plan. Yes, my plan was like in 2014 yeah. when I started with the blog. I thought, you know what? All I have to do now is basically for years, for years on end, yeah. to invest my own time yeah. and my own money and, you know, writing blog posts and yeah. you know, going to conferences, giving presentations, yeah. and then sitting yeah. down for torturing myself for a year yeah. to write a book. And then, but then, yeah. then I will that, cash out that was the becoming plan. a developer advocate yeah. because we all know it's, like <laughs> it's, it's Jeff Bezos and it's, it's Elon Musk and then it's all the developer advocates because we ran in the big money. Um, yeah. No, seriously, so uh, yeah, that actually, I felt like it was so weird to be asked that by Oracle, like, do you want to come on the team and do that? Um, if they would have a job posting, I would never dare to apply because I thought, like, yeah. why me? I'm just a random Java dude on the internet. Yeah, sure. Um, um, but like, it's an incredible chance to actually. Just the other day, I had some questions about uh, some Java stuff, and I could actually just chat up Ryan Gertz on Zoom and talk yeah. to him like for half an hour, and yeah. that was amazing, right? I can now get per first hand. Uh, knowledge about about like just um, to better understand um, certain decisions that were made, right? Like um, we said, like Java has changed at the moment quite quickly, and much of that happens in the open, but it's not very easy to observe, right? The mailing lists, yeah, that's they're right. kind of a mess. Like if yeah. you don't follow them closely, then they're hard to search. It's yeah. hard to get a grip on them. So I really think that um, this that the that it's easy to, to think from the outside that where Brian gets sits down like uh, six months before release and just writes out like, okay, let's do lambdas and now let's yeah. do text blocks. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But it's really not like that. <laughs> and uh, I think that that having my job now is explaining better to people what what goes on, what what, what happens before such release comes out and how much these releases, cha these releases change uh, 
for Java, everyday Java programming because obviously people like Mark Reinhold and Brian Getz and Alex Buckley, all the people working on, on that, on that they are best, like the best for us is if they just keep working. <laughs> <laughs> like every, every email they write yeah. to the outside world is great for, for, right? It's great for us to receive, to get insight and to give feedback on. Those are valuable, but probably more valuable if they just sit down and give us value yeah. types don't, earlier. Don't disturb them in any way. Just, just be right. grateful for what they do. <laughs> yeah, but we still want to have, we still want to see that transparency, right? We still like, yeah. we're, I'm very thankful for the stuff on the mailing list, right? My book that I wrote about the module system would not have been possible Uh, without the mailing list like yeah. how would i know all of that stuff right all of that detailed yeah. information um you cannot possibly come up with all the special cases yourself and try them all out but if you diligently read these mailing lists you notice what other people notice and then you yeah. try it out yourself and then you realize oh that's actually a thing and what could be the solution to that um so just um though these things are like the mailing list specifically but also the the japs the java enhancement proposals um those documents that they write for example brian gets has this um habit of writing the state of the yeah. voila, state of the value types kind of documents which, which is really cool by the way it's it's a, a one-stop place to get the compressed yeah. future of yes. java it's, it's yeah a really those, like those articles are amazing really yeah. um and those things are out there and they're like but they're not like they're not they're not um trivial to find yeah. but i think that's one of one of the things i want to do is to make them more accessible to people so uh Now, having learned that you're actually an <laughs> Oracle employee, and I have to cut the friendship with you from now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> ne ne next week is is a great opportunity to meet Nikolai um, live, not in person, because due to Corona, we, we unfortunately cannot meet in person. But there's a great show going on, uh, virtual Java Land, and Nikolai is having a session there, as far as I know. Yes, so, I do. Be, be there. It, it's always a great pleasure to see Nikola in action doing live coding or convincing us that all products are the best. <laughs> <laughs> so, I knew I knew I shouldn't have told you. Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, no. Yeah, but no, I literally, like, that's, that's very important. Like, I want to I want to put the record straight, right? I literally I just forgot. I just noticed while I was talking about what happens at Oracle, I realized like. Oh dang it! When we, we when we discussed this, it was January, right? So I didn't yeah. tell you back then, and since then there hasn't been an opportunity. And I can't just you, not say, right? I can't sit here and tell everybody how amazing you, you, uh, Java is doing without, like, at least giving you know the disclosure yeah. that while that is my honest opinion, it's also something yeah. that I do for a job now, right? So I think the balance that I have to strike is important. Yeah. Another thing I want to do next week, by the sure. way, if I may be so uh, you, you uh, may. aggressively marketing my own shit <laughs> uh, on March 16, the yeah. day before Java Land. Um, there is the Java 16 will be released, and on that Tuesday evening, I'm doing a Twitch live stream. So we're gonna have a release party. We're gonna Great. have beer and pizza, be but you have to get your own beer and pizza because, like, you know, <laughs> you, you you remember it's only 25 kilometers. So don't tell me you have pizza. I will smell it. <laughs> <laughs> but you can't, like, but you can still come in. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I, I can, I can. <laughs> Watch out. <laughs> Challenge accepted. <laughs> yeah. Well, Nikolai, so uh, we see you next week uh, in Java land. And um, if, if you would have a last wish for Java, what would be the thing you wish to, to come next? Or as you said, you want to get rid of things. What would be the thing that you want to get rid of most urgently? Oh, yeah. Let's, you know, we all know, or we don't all know, but we can all look up what's coming, kind of. And those are very interesting things. So, but let's turn to what we should get rid of. That's also very interesting. Um, I don't speak for myself here because I don't have problems with these things like serialization, for example. I just avoid that. So I don't have any problems with yeah. that. But if you ever saw these Ask Me Anythings or the, what they call like Ask the Architect is what they're called. Yeah. Um, these are like sessions at the larger conferences when there are a couple of people from Oracle's um, actually like the Java developers, not you know people like me who just talk, um, but people who actually do that. Uh, they sit on stage. And you can ask them, like, you know, what's your most hated Java features? Yeah. And what always comes up first is serialization. Um, and the reason for that is that <laughs> it, um, it interacts with a lot of other stuff. And yeah. everything that happens in the Java, within Java, like within the JVM, always at some point the decision has to be made. What about serialization? And I think the most obscure and weird example of that is Lambdas. Like, there was, like, Ryan got said that 
a non trivial amount of time, like like he said, like maybe 10, 20 percent of the time of Project Lambda was spent discussing serialization, which is absurd because lambdas are like behavior, like an action, and you want to serialize <laughs> yeah. data. Why would those be connected? And the reason is, well, because of the way that Java does serialization, like everything can be serializable, mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. So that's apparently a large problem. So in interest of yeah. the, the quicker development of Java, I think it would be pretty cool um, if serialization were to be dropped. And I'm not sure whether it's going to be dropped actually at some point. Um, but what's really interesting at the moment is that serialization is getting revamped for records. And um, there's the Inside Java podcast. Mm. And there was a recent episode, like I think last week, that discussed how serialization or how records will be serialized and how that is not well, how that is better than the current serialization for all the classes that we have. Mm. And um, so I hope, I'm not sure whether there's actually a plan to de deprecate like normal serialization. Because surely that's going to break everything. Um, so I don't know. But yeah, that would be something that I would hope. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So now that we learned that Nikolai wants to drop serialization of Java and, and I hope it will happen someday. <laughs> 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 I think, yeah, it's, it's 45 minutes now. A, a good point to let you go to your next uh, session on TV. We pretended to do 30 minutes. So sorry for the technical interruption. Nikolai, thank you for being here. It was really great to have you in the show. And thank you for having me. Yeah, great pleasure. And uh, we will see all of you and Nikolai in Java land and before that on his Twitch session about JDK release. So good night to everybody to you and party on. Bye. Bye. Oh yeah, party on. Yeah, fuck yeah. Oh, wait, I have something. Wait, wait, okay, okay, oh, wait, oh, wait. <laughs> How what? could I not have shown you that? What what, is, what are I you just doing? like I randomly realized I have a Metallica beer can here. Yeah! But now I cannot open yeah. it because I just shook it when yeah, I got yeah, it don't, out of Don't the... open it, don't open it. <laughs> Great. Yeah, so fuck on. Uh, sorry, I rock on as well. <laughs> <laughs> fuck yeah, rock on is what I tried to say. And good night, can we everybody. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Oh, geil. <lacht> also so, wir sind raus. <lacht> ja. Okay. Ja, sorry. Ich, 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 ich,